have had an ear infection. Oh, those suck. For like a week, freaking laid oh. me out. It's starting to get better now. I've now, first of all, um, who do they think they are? Ears. What do they do all day? They just sit there. They don't do anything. What are they doing to get infected? Just laying around, lazy, useless. Well, when they get in, when your ears are infected, it hurts to lay down. It. The worst part is the irritation comes across. It makes your. It's it's like an itch inside that you, you want to deal with. But this is the forbidden hole, right? Nothing goes in the well, forbidden when, hole. When the itch gets to like in your, like there's this like yes. no man's land between yes. your ear canal and your throat because it's all connected and you get the itch like here in a place you couldn't scratch if you wanted to without but you, dying. But you, got, you, got, you want to get a Q-tip in there, but there's only so far. It's the forbidden hole. Nothing goes in this hole or should go in this hole. You really need to stop saying forbidden hole. On it the is internet. though. It's the forbidden hole because it's it's one of the few holes that if you shove things into enough, you break the hole. And then what what good is this thing? It's just like you know, no, that's, this floppy that's bit actually of skin. true of all the holes. Okay, true, yeah, but it's just varying degrees. This one's not real hard to work with. There we go. Each week. Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff. Something we like to call, what the fuck is wrong with you? And Tara, what was it, two weeks ago, I said, we have hit the wa high water mark. Nothing is going to beat this. I said, and Tara, I, told I said, you. I said we were we were at the point where nothing was it, it was it was it was as hard as could be. Nothing was getting that was it. That was fucking it. We I said. Yeah. And I was like, you're wrong, though. He is becoming a nemesis. How is this possible? How is a goddamn Kennedy? The nemesis of this, 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 the fucking moron show. <laughs> I, I, a word was introduced into my lexicon, a, a phrase was introduced in my lexicon this weekend, Tara. Do you know what that phrase was? Um, no. Whale juice. What? Did, did you not? Wait, Were you I not didn't aware hear of this? about this one. What? You didn't hear about this? Oh my goodness. No. The environmental advocacy organization is calling for an investigation of Robert F. Kennedy Jr. following the resurfacing of an interview where his daughter said he cut a dead whale's head off with a chainsaw. Kennedy cut off a whale's head with a chainsaw in or around 1994 after finding out it washed up on Squaw Island in Hyannisport, Massachusetts, um, his daughter, Kick Kennedy, told Town & Country also, Magazine. Like, who names their daughter Kick? I don't know if that's her legal name. Well, it's, that's it's, what she goes I think by. It's, she's Kathleen, but they call her I, Kick. That's, okay. Because I, I keep seeing that name and I'm like, is that her legal name? Is he that insane? He bungee corded it to the roof of the family's minivan and drove it to Mount Stop. Kisco, New York. Quote, Can you imagine being on the fucking highway? Every time we accelerate on the highway, whale juice would pour into the windows of the car and it was the, the rankest thing on the planet. Quote, Stop. we all had we all had plastic bags over our heads with mouth holes cut out and people on the highway were giving us the finger, but that was just normal day-to-day -day stuff for us. Let me tell you something about, I I'm familiar with Mount Kisco. I used mm -hmm. to live near there and the highway that may runs through that part of New York, 684 there. 
684 is the fucking wasteland. People drive on 684 like it's a Mad Max movie. And it's all fucking suburban Westchester, New York. Doesn't matter. People drive like it's the wasteland. You could be going 95 miles an hour. You're not going to get pulled over. The cops don't bother. They don't care. And still, I feel like it would fuck people up to be driving by a car with the head of a whale strapped to the top. And if, it, if that didn't fuck you up enough, then you're going to be like, is that Bobby Kennedy's kid? <laughs> like I thought, for fuck's sakes, I thought this shit with the bear and Roseanne. And I thought that so was the weirdest fucking possible like, thing. If you have a child mm. that is dismembering animals, that is an early sign of a serial killer. And you're supposed to get that kid to therapy yesterday. Well, part of the reason why this, this man, has this is the, This is like the fourth story of him dismembering oh, yeah. an animal for oh, funsies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, the, the, the reason listen, why this he he's a Kennedy. So the power and resources exist that he could have killed hundreds of people. We'll never know. Well, the reason this is cropping up again is, well, obviously people are going back and looking through old interviews and stuff. Also, just while we're just tangentially, apparently Kick Kennedy is the reason that Ben Affleck left J-Lo again. What? He's dating Kit Kennedy. Yeah. I really feel like Ben Affleck has been a walking cry for help for about 10 years now. So and nobody will help him. So the reason why people are looking back through these old interviews, this is from 2012, but pre actual environmental groups, not like, you know, Bobby Kennedy Jr. claimed he was being actual environmental groups are pointing out that this is a violation of a law um, that the Marine Mammal Protection and Endangered Species Act, which says you can't do this, that if something washes up on the beach, even if it's dead, you can't grab a chainsaw and drive 100 miles and cut its head off and take it home. You're not allowed to do that. It's very illegal. I honestly didn't know you could cut through a whale with a chainsaw. Oh, you can cut through anything with a chainsaw if you believe. They Tara. seem designed to be resistant to that, though. <sighs> Normally, an unverified anecdote would not provide sufficient evidence as the basis for conducting an investigation. However... However, Mr. Kennedy has admitted that he has recklessly and with no regard to legal requirements taken other species of wildlife for his own personal benefit. The man. Maybe this is why Trump is talking about Hannibal, Hannibal Lecter so much on the campaign trail. I just, how how not only is it twice, Tara, how does it get worse? Because the dead bear was bad enough. That was pretty bad. The, the, the taking the bear and posing with the bear in your hand and the bear. That was bad. But this is actual corpse dismemberment and hauling it down the high. Man, even hunters don't typically dismember the thing and put it on the car. They take the whole like, thing home. I mean, the whole whale wasn't going to fit on top of the car, Nash. Be reasonable. <sighs> I just love that Bobby Kennedy Jr., Bobby's special little boy, was watching the TV and saw a dead whale on the beach and went, let me get my chainsaw. And this was a normal weekend for the fucking Kennedys. And the stupidest part is he didn't have to drive it to Mount Kisco because it says he found it in Hyannisport. That is the seat of the Kennedy compound. They literally call it a compound. It is basically... Buckingham Palace for the Kennedys in Massachusetts. Like there was somewhere for it to go. Do you think the rest of his family would have let him drive a dead whale head in there? They let him do all the rest of the shit. 
I don't think they let him so much as Jesus Christ, Bobby. What did you do this time? Can you imagine? Like, and listen, I said this last time. The Kennedys are a fucked up family to the root. Mm. And I Mm. say this as somebody who was raised by parents who worshipped JFK because we were Irish Catholic and Mm. you do. Right. But like the Kennedys are a fucked up family. Like the more you learn about the Kennedys, the more you're like, oof, yikes. Fucking chainsaw, Tara. And they're all like, like you do the bar graph of fucked up shit in the Kennedys. And everyone else levels out around here. And then you got Bobby. Who just... Is it, so I'm just like, what's going to happen in two weeks now? What what are we going to find out in two weeks? Is it going to be shit we can't talk about here? Is it going to be that bad? Because we have limits I mean, here. There there are rumors. Oh God! That he is replacing a certain VP nominee. Yeah, well that that doesn't who, rise to the shit we can't talk about. I'm talking about like no, is, but is, I mean. If he if he becomes what I'm saying is if he becomes a legitimate VP nominee, the press is going to start doing some real vetting, which they haven't so far. Oh, boy. And then the weird shit comes out. Well, let's move on to something. This is the stuff he's willing to talk about in public, by the way. If this is the stuff he's willing to talk about in public, what are his dirty little secrets? We'll we'll just let that one simmer for a bit. Let's move on to something mm-hmm. somewhat normal. How is this normal? How is this next story? Our, this is normal. This is relaxing the next fucking story. I swear to God. So, of course, we have people will smuggle things across the border. People will smuggle drugs across the border. And you think, well, they do this for a living. They must be pretty good at it. And then... You get to the innovators, I guess you'd call them. How in the fuck? <sighs> Math, fake watermelons full of drugs fail to fool U.S. agents. I wonder that, why. That wouldn't fool my cats. That is plastic with a watermelon print on it. That is a plastic watermelon bag. That is visibly plastic. Yeah. There is, there's not even, yeah, like, even at a distance, that thing does not, it doesn't even look like a watermelon. It has, no. it's, it's lumpy. Watermelons, normal watermelons, watermelons are not lumpy. Watermelons don't have tumors. Typically. And if they do, don't buy them. The United States border agents have intercepted a truck carrying more than $5 million worth of methamphetamine at the U.S.-Mexico border hidden inside a shipment of watermelons. So there were some real watermelons, okay? But then they mixed these watermelons, big air quotes, in with them. So which like probably e. didn't. Yeah. It probably didn't like help, all the stuffed though. animals and then E.T. Except, you know, E.T. actually blended in. Like, if you saw this next to a real watermelon, you're not going to be going, oh, that's a watermelon, too. That's obviously another watermelon. More than two tons of methamphetamine, a total of 1,200 this- packages were seized by officers. Stashing drugs among produce is a common way to smuggle the illicit substances across the border. Um, I, I, and then they pad out the rest of it. Also known simply as meth, it is a highly powerful and highly addictive stimulant. Yes, we know. You're just padding up your word count here. Look at the bin full of them. None of them look like a watermelon. Not one of these damn things look like a watermelon. They're a hot five. All right, so Tara. Imagine you have $5 million worth of illegal product that you're going to attempt to move from one side of the border to the other. And someone comes up to you and says, hey, we'll just put it in these watermelon bags and then put those next to watermelons and nobody will know the difference. Because it'll be camouflage 
Five million dollars worth of twelve hundred dollars. Jason Pinkman's really stupid friends. Like Badger and whatever the yeah. other guys. That's Skinny this Pete. is their plan. Yeah, this right. is Badger, this is Badger Skinny Pete. and Skinny Pete's plan. Yeah. You know what I don't understand? <sighs> I don't understand why nobody disguises meth as rock candy. They probably do. They, those are probably the successful like rock candy. Those are probably the successful. Yeah, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't get that yeah. story because it would work. Can you imagine? There were at this was two tons of meth. So that means there were like what 10, 15 guys all sitting around on a weekend with the watermelon bags. And the meth, shoveling meth into the watermelon bags. You had to had to bet they were just. This is never going to work. <laughs> I, I just don't don't tell him that. I like don't, I don't think it's going to work, man. You know you you know your boss who we've all had that boss who comes up to us with a terrible fucking idea. You're like boss, that's not going to work. But they are insistent on trying it anyway because that's how bosses are. And then you do and it, it and it doesn't when work. It doesn't work. It's your fault. It's your fault because you yeah. didn't believe in the watermelons. That's the thing. You didn't believe hard enough is the thing. You didn't wrap them tight enough. You made them lumpy, <laughs> idiot. It's like these are tumor melons. This is so horrible. Just, just they not even remotely like a watermelon. It's like. <laughs> You've never seen a. It's like if you were expecting people to have never seen a watermelon before, they might think this is a watermelon based on the description. However, I mean, you might fool people that had only ever seen a watermelon in Minecraft. <laughs> oh, all right. We have uh, Australia next. God damn it. Well, at least all I could say about this one was at least he wasn't in the air at the time. Oh, <sighs> yeah. Passenger opens jets doors and walks on wing of plane after landing at Australia Airport. You know what? There's probably one of those fucking Australian spiders that are like the size of a human. <laughs> Pastor was arrested at an Australian airport after he left a stationary airliner through the emergency exit, walked on along a wing, and then climbed down a jet engine to the tarmac. Just our flight JQ-507 had arrived at Melbourne Airport from Sydney, had parked at a terminal gate when the man left the plane by the right side exit, opening the... Pardon, that was terrible. Anyway. Opening the exit automatically deployed a slide from the back of the wing to, at the fuselage to the ground. The man instead walked along the wing and climbed down one of the Airbus A320's two engines. The man was exhibiting some strange behavior, Pastor Audrey Varghese said. As soon as the plane started coming to a stop, he immediately got up and basically charged to where the exit row is. And in the process... Uh, shoving people, causing a bit of a commotion, and ripped open the emergency door. Another passenger identified as Madison told the Nine News Television the man had been vaping, which is not allowed during the 90 minute mid morning flight. 90 minutes, and you couldn't go with it. And had unsuccessfully demanded the air crew provide him with alcohol. I, he was assessed by paramedics, taken to the hospital, remains for further assessment. What Here's the fuck? The, the wing, if you're on a plane, is actually quite high off the ground. Oh, God, yes. It's like, what, 12 feet? It's like the two stories up easily. One or two yeah, stories. Because underneath where the people go is the cargo. Like... You're not at the bottom of the plane when you're sitting no. in the passenger area. No, so like the wing is mm -hmm. quite high off the ground. And even if you even if you shimmy down the engine, you're still dropping probably a full story. Onto cement. 
Superhero landing. So, superhero landing. He's going to do it. Exactly. Like, how are your <laughs> knees feeling, sir? Well, I just. Why is it like we used to have the mile high club where people get laid in, in the sky and now we have the open emergency exit club where people keep yeah, popping open like, the door. Why are you doing this? I need people to stop doing that. I don't. It makes me nervous. I don't like it. It's like, uh, I want to get out of here faster. No, you're not. Where are you going to go? Weird like, that they wouldn't serve him alcohol. Weird. Yeah. And like, I used to vape. Right. I used to smoke, but I, I could go several hours without having to do so on a plane. I used to buy nicotine gum when I went on planes just so I wouldn't have to worry about this shit for the duration of the flight. Cause it used to be, man, they used to have like smoking areas in the airports and they were the saddest things. They were like this glass terrarium. They put all the smokers in and, and the smell in there was not good. Like you're all right. All right smoking's they, already pretty bad smell, but the smell there in there was There used to be a magic. smoking section on the plane. Which was yeah. separated from the non-smoking section in absolutely no way. It Here's was just, these rows are the smoking section. We're Here's just going to tell the smoke not to go in the front. Here's a fun fact about that. Airline engineers have been talking about this lately what, with all the Boeing crap going on. They used to be able to tell when there were faults in the fuselage by the nicotine stains where the smoke had escaped from onboard the flight. They used to be, they were using that to trace problems. <laughs> Maybe that's why there's so many problems with the planes now. Cause you can't smoke. Them. Yeah. I just like, I could have just this. There should just be a no asshole rule on the, if you cannot contain your assholery for, for that Nash, length, just don't get on the plane. If we started banning assholes from things, the economy would collapse. All right. Yes. Yes, it would. Yeah. Speaking of collapsing an economy, um, hey, it's Florida. Oh, shit. I have been upset at a business or two before in my lifetime. I'm sure we all have. Sure. I remember was one time I ordered a pizza from a pizza place. And online, I was like, please have it here. I, I as soon as possible. My order did not arrive, I swear to God, until the next day. What? Oh. In the morning. What? I want to point this out. This also came from a place called Stoner's Pizza. I'm not kidding. Yeah. Dan I mean, actually it sounds like got a joke. basically the, you know, the old meme with the nun left beef pizza? Yeah. We ordered from Domino's at one point and Dan ordered a pizza with sausage. And he didn't think he'd have to specify the cheese and the sauce because that seems to be standard. And when he but got apparently. it was pizza dough with sausage. So that, that we was sent a my... picture to our friends and they were like, you got none left beef. And we're like, we did. That would make me a bit grumpy, I'm sure, but not to this. Sure. This is like a dude. This is like some dude's origin fucking story about a, a vigilante with one very specific revenge. Holy shit, this guy. Um, man jailed for impersonating Miami Springs Pizzeria delivering disgusting pies. What? A 55-year-old man is facing a felony charge in South Florida for a bizarre impersonation scheme that left pizza customers getting a raw deal. That's 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 them being funny. Police say he ran quote an elaborate scheme to defraud, defraud tourists staying in the hotels of Miami Springs by pre pretending to be a well-known local pizza parlor. According to police, customers thought they were ordering from Roman's Pizzeria. They were instead getting subpar slices from Jose Marti Alvarez. Uh, Jose Marti Alvarez. There we go. Uh, Marti Alvarez distributed fake pizza flyers to hotel rooms, advertising Roman Pizzeria, misleading visitors. 
Uh, Jesus Roman, the proprietor of the real Roman's Pizzeria, who had been cooking up pies for four decades, said Marty Alvarez pizzas were, quote, bad, uncooked. Sometimes they were sent in a box with a piece of raw dough. They just give it to them. And by the time they realized it, they'd gone away. Police said the fraud had been, quote, ongoing for several years. It has caused significant hardship for the real Romans, including complaints to the Better Business Bureau, negative reviews, oh, and upset customers. Sometimes they show up here to the store claiming, quote, where's the food, Roman said. We have to explain to them, it's not us. After Roman went to police, officers arrested Marty Alvarez on a charge of organized scheme to defraud and booked him into jail early Monday morning. How fucking messed up are you that on, like, I assume you have to have a day job. You have other shit you're doing to provide for yourself. But on your free time, the time you do not have to spend giving to somebody else for money, you buy pizza boxes and print flyers and get materials and wait for people to call. You have a delivery service all set up, but instead of actually making money, Delivering this delivery service, you're just fucking another delivery service. That's the whole point of it. What? Yeah, like I'm not, I can't really get a beat on the motive here. Like, were you trying to start your own pizzeria? No, you use just, their name. He was just trying to, to put business? this fucker out of. He was just trying to put this fucker out of business. Like this is, this is a level of vengeance. That is, you gotta gotta respect the the the. De I mean, it's stupid, but he did commit to the bit. I mean, it sounds like he committed a lot of money to the bit, right? And I'm not like, sure that's worth it. Me personally, if I realized I had accidentally started a delivery business, I would have been like, maybe I should actually deliver shit. I could actually make money. Hey, what do you know? I could, I, well, 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 what do you know? But no. Yeah, but see, don't, don't you remember the episode of The Facts of Life where Joe starts selling her mom's recipe pizza and then it gets really popular and the local frat starts ordering and it gets out of hand and she has to start using like lower quality ingredients and she blows up her own business because she can't handle the volume? Tara, I, I only just remembered Facts of Life, period. That that was 40 years ago. <laughs> okay, that, well, that was, that's that was... an episode of the show. That's a thing. <sighs> Why in the... I just... <sighs> so stupid! So yeah. incredibly stupid! There's so many other things that you could do with your time and money... Like you are obviously this. are you are industrious enough to put this shit together. Bro, you could have been doing real crime. Like or real actual crimes. Real actual business. Business, yes. Like maybe not pizza, because it sounds like you're really bad at it. But you know, you had the ambition. You could have done something with it. Well, the next one is... And man, uh, does anything suck more than being in a hotel and getting shitty delivery food? Because you have no oh other God. options. Yeah. yeah. Well, you it's go not to like you're like, machines. all right, well, I guess I'll just microwave something. Like, you're fucked. Like, it's either that or you walk down to the convenience store three blocks away. You have no fucking yeah. idea where you are. Yeah. So, uh... I have no way to describe our next story aside from... Human train wreck. That's this is this is a this is like if people could could cause a four car pileup just by being people. Just just wait. It just it just it it keeps going and going. It's also Florida, of course. Quote: Setting a bad example. Florida mother faces serious charges after video shows her jumping into fight with high school students to help her daughter. And we have some no. pictures there. Florida mother was captured on video attacking a girl at a high school bus stop after the teen got into a fight with her daughter. 
Catherine Stephanopoulos, 34, was arrested on August 19th and charged with felony child abuse because you can't hit other people's kids. One of the three juveniles involved in the brawl was arrested on a charge of felony aggravated assault. However, since the names of the minors were held by authorities, it's unclear which one was taken to jail. Investigators also recommended misdemeanor charge against the second girl involved in the fracas, and those charges were sent to the state attorney's office. I for love review. that word, fracas. Fracas, yeah. Um, the Flagler County School District in North Daytona had not commented on the incident, which started on a packed bus as students from Palm Coast High School went home for the day. The resulting brawl was recorded in a three-minute video that emerged on TV news and led to the woman's arrest. Just before the fight, Stepanopoulos' daughter, daughter texted her, saying she was about to fight a girl she used to be friends with until the relationship went south over the summer. The beef spilled into the new school year. As fall classes began just two days before the, flight, the, the fight. On the ride home from school on August 14th, the words were exchanged. The former friends agreed to settle their differences as soon as they reached the bus stop. The girl's mother was already waiting at the drop-off point when the bus arrived. A moment later, the video picks up, showing the two girls stepping off the bus, removing their backpacks, and squaring up before fists started flying. After a few seconds, Stepanopoulos jumped in, but instead of breaking up the fight, the footage showed the petite woman grabbing the young girl aggressively as her daughter kept throwing blows. So mom jumps in, grabs the other girl, is like, Work the body, sweetie. Work the fucking body. Work the... During the struggle, Stephanopoulos and the student fell to the ground where the woman allegedly placed the girl in a headlock. Stephanopoulos was dra grappling the girl to the ground. The young girl's sister joined the fray, slugged it out with the woman's daughter. At another point, a male student joined the fracas, again with the fracas, in an attempt to break it up, but was quickly drawn in and began throwing blows as well. Quote, how did this shit even get instigated, bro? One student said, how this shit even happen? When amid the chaos, the bus driver started leading on the horn and yelling at the there? woman. He was still there and yelling at the woman and the girls to stop fighting. When that didn't work, the girl's sisters told deputies she hit Stephanopoulos in the face with a metal cup to free her sibling from the headlock. Quote, did she just hit her with a Stanley cup? A student asked off camera in the video. Quote, yes, she did. Another student replied, quote, that's crazy. See, the first student said. We laugh at the white said. girls for our Stanley cups, but damn it, that's self-defense. It's the a fight weapon. <laughs> the fight continued until more bystanders arrived and finally broke it up. Shortly after, someone from the bus could be heard yelling, quote, your mom's going to prison. The fuck, lady? Like, I know every parent says that they would kick the ass of anyone that messes with their kids. Right, right. But you don't actually do that. I got I got beat up by a gang in high school. Like, I got the shit kicked out of me by a legit gang. And did my dad want to murder those kids? Of course mm -hmm. he did. Mm-hmm. Did my dad actually go out and murder those kids? No. No. Because no. that would be wrong. Yeah. But it, it what it's my like, sister kind of tried to murder those kids. I think it's this is a TV show thing. I think people think ahead to like the end of a show. They they, they get their the fucking world crisscrossed in their brain. They're like, OK, if I do this thing, the problem is resolved and that's it. This is a solution. The end. It ends here. Nothing else will happen. I'm done because that's how the world works. And it's not because the world's not like TV. There are no episode endpoints. Shit right. goes on. The, the credits never roll. Right. The credits never roll. It just it, it doesn't flip. Oh, it's not even like a previously on. It's not even like that shit. It just keeps going. There is no good outcome to laying your hands on another person's child. Even if they almost no. grown, they are still technically a minor. No good outcome comes from this. I don't know what was like going you through your damn like head. You pulled the other girl off your daughter. Great. That should have been the, yeah. But then you, 
then you kept going. Yeah. You put her in a headlock. You put a teenager in a headlock. Yeah. Is is that that that's sort of most of us that sort of sort of been a moment of self reflection sitting there going, how did I get here? What what have I done? Record scratch. You might be wondering. <laughs> Jesus how did Christ. I end up here? Well, it's because I live in Florida, apparently. Last one this week. This is I, I would call this almost Kennedy esque because that's that's how the Kennedys are these days. Um, this is from Joyzy. Um, the Kohansik Zoo. Do you know where that is? No. Hmm. Okay. Well, we're about you're learning stuff tonight, Tara. We're all learning stuff tonight. <sighs> Woman nearly bitten by tiger after climbing over fence at New Jersey Zoo. Police are looking for a woman who climbed over a barrier surrounding a tiger enclosure at a zoo in New Jersey uh, before she approached the, the big cats and put a hand through a metal fence, narrowly avoiding being bitten. British and police say they are wanted to speak with a woman after video of her inside the enclosure at Kohansik Zoo in Bridgeton emerged. The police department released the video Tuesday. It is unclear when the incident took place. A female at the Kohansik Zoo went over the wooden fence at the uh, tiger enclosure and began enticing the tiger, almost getting bit by putting her hand through the wire enclosure. Video shows the woman climbing over a wooden fence designed to keep visitors away from the tigers before she goes right up to the tall metal fence and places her hand through a small gap, apparently an attempt to pet the enormous animal. Tiger quickly moves forward its jaws toward her, forcing her to swiftly remove her hand and step away. She stops and poses as if someone else is taking a photograph before she climbs back over the wooden enclosure. Okay. I mean, in her defense, in her defense. Okay. okay. If not friend, why friend shaped? I mean, I also want to hug a tiger. They're cute and they look fuzzy. You know, little faces and they like to sit in boxes. Terry, you know what else they like to do? Eat people. They like to dismember large mammals. Yeah. Th these and that are animals. It's very sad because I would like to hug them, but they don't yeah. want me to hug them. Th these are things that th th they, any. They, they are made to destroy meat. We are yeah. meat. Okay. Speak of the devil. Hi, Simba. <laughs> You're Simba. a lion king, though, not a tiger. It's close, but not the same. Now, I me. Know, I, I love you, too. Uh, maybe I'm weird. Maybe I'm odd. But when not the there's, when there's not yeah, I... one, but two fences... Two, yeah. count them, two fences. That might be enough to make me reconsider attempting to get to the tiger because I don't know how many people know this. Maybe this is just, I, 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 I maybe. As if to illustrate the point, Simba has started chewing on my Firestar action figure. There you go. Um, I, I don't know how many people are aware of this, but fences are nature's way of saying no. Yeah. That is, it is, nature, get the fuck out, stay the fuck away. That's why we invented the fence. It, it was invented yeah. in 1683 by Jacques purpose. Le Fence. Um, <laughs> uh, so it just, just don't do this. It's a tiger. Yeah. It's a goddamn tiger. And they are so cute, but no, I tragically have a, not we, for hugging. I have I have a different definition of cute than you do. It's they like, are, come on, they they're cute though. With as their a cub, toes. as a cub, they're no. adorable. When something breaches a certain size, it's no longer cute. All right, you're talking to the girl that 
really likes hippos. Which also will murder a motherfucker, I, I should point out. Also so cute. They're not even carnivores. And they're just like really <laughs> good at murder. They'll just kill you because they can. That's the, yeah, that's they're psychotic. Yeah. And I respect that. Like a leather tank made of psychosis. But just and but like the tiger is like that, but also fuzzy. It it's you would not have made it through the paleolithic that's that's all i can say i did say i know not to pet a tiger i'm aware i just think it's an injustice that if not friend why friend shaped i know not friend i'm just angry that not friend I also love that after she almost lost her fucking hand, she's like, well, let me get a selfie. But at that oh, point, fuck. you might as fucking well. Wasn't that a thing for a while, though? Like, people were doing, were taking, yeah. like, tiger selfies for their dating profiles. <sighs> and every news network had to be like, please don't take tiger selfies for your dating app if i saw a dating app someone with a tiger selfie the first thing i'd be like ah oh, that's a bad idea and their job and their job listed was not zookeeper yeah that's a bad idea you'd be like oh you're not smart bears are fuzzy too yes and they're adorable they're adorable murder tanks so Tara, cute it's a little homework for you uh there's a movie called grizzly man uh, maybe you can watch that before next week. Well, a grizzly man doesn't sound cute. A grizzly bear sounds cute. <laughs> oh, it's got Werner Herzog. It's loads of laughs. You'll love it. Um. <laughs> anyway, uh, what have we learned this week? We've learned don't. If there's two fences. It's not there just to make it make your day more difficult. It's not an obstacle course. It's not cardio. It's it's because bad things are on the other side of that fence. <sighs> We've learned. We've not learned bad that things. just things for which you are no match. <laughs> We've learned that. You really need to think your plan through beyond the denouement. Okay. You, you need to think about, and then what? You yeah. know, it's, it, yeah. So, um, we have learned if you're going to put enough effort into destroying someone else's business that you accidentally start your own business. Maybe next time, just start your own business. Right. You accidentally go, became. Like, that is an option. You, you accidentally became an entrepreneur. How the fuck does that happen? We've learned that the door, there's only a certain door you're allowed to leave the plane on for a specific reason. Every other yeah. door is the no-no door. In fact, it has no-no on it. Do you not understand? No, this big red caution. This, Do not. Well, this week's title just be the forbidden holes. <laughs> Emergency exit on the plane, the ear, the tiger mouth. We've learned that normally watermelons don't have tumors. <laughs> I, I don't know who we had to tell this to, but if you're of the if, if you're kind of you can't identify a watermelon. Maybe don't try to disguise something as a watermelon. It's. Yeah. Do you have like a watermelon blind spot to not understand what the problem? Five million dollars worth of your product. You fucking idiots. Try to 
try to use something you've seen before next time, maybe. And finally, we've learned I should not say we've ever reached a peak because the next time mm -hmm. I, RFK Jr. will do something else. He will. And like I said, this is the stuff he's willing to talk about. What are the things he's not willing to talk about? Like we're going to go, he's going to get to the next fucking press conference with Trump. He's going to walk out there in a suit that he made out of like three people he found in the parking lot and act like what, what, 